I've spoken to a lot of the best people in the business, and they're names that you'd know, names who've been mixing great shows for a long time. They've all been generous with their feedback and given me lots of great ideas about what to do. The important thing to remember is that their needs are all somewhat different, even though their end results all have to get put together into a show that's convincing and compelling to someone watching it. So for example, if you're looking at dialogue, well, dialogue takes place on screen. There may be an occasional effect where it's stage left or something like that, but, but generally it's right down the middle somewhere. And the dialogue mixer is going to want to focus that energy, and especially the early reflections. It wants to keep your attention right there. So in using a reverb in that sense, you need to be able to focus most of the energy there while still moving enough out into the room to make it not feel like it's a combination of just stereo reverbs, makes it feel like natural surround, but keeps the focus where it wants to be. Now an effect might be something else. An effect might happen on screen, it might happen overhead, it might happen behind you or off to the side. So the person doing the effects mixing has a whole different set of concerns. Now he may really have to worry about staying away from the center or from the screen because there's dialogue going on in there. And that, so, so the effects mixer, the sound designer, has got to think about where energy goes that can be convincing and still work in combination with what's going on in the dialogue mix. Score brings yet another problem. Generally speaking, a score might use the most natural form of reverb, the most natural energy distribution, because you're really kind of going after the, the effect of a pit orchestra there, like movies used to be 70 or 80 years ago. You want that sense of the orchestra being there, so it may be along the sides, maybe a little bit across the top. That's one of the things that I hear in some of the more modern Atmos mixes these days. And once again, you've got to be able to keep the energy there and not step on the dialogue, not step on some effect that's going on. So my focus has been based on what I've heard from mixers, that I need to do this, that I need to be able to focus the energy, but still have it blend so that all the disciplines of a large mix all come together. One of the things, and if you're mixing for film or television, you know this without me telling you, that you don't have nearly enough time. You, your schedule is compressed, you've got a director breathing down your neck, and you always have at least one day less to work on your mix than you wish you had. And sometimes it's worse than that. Now I can't change that, but the thing that I can work on is making sure that the workflow using these new reverbs is quick and natural so that you, with a minimum of mouse clicks, a minimum of button pushes, can get what you need and get on with the mix. There's always room for improvement. My existing surrounds have been out in the market for three or four years now, and I've always been thinking about what I can do to make them better. For example, I used a technology called 3D Link that allowed me to link up two of the plugins so that I could get a high set and a low set and get immersive formats out of that. That worked really well, but it was a little bit of a bother, and I wanted to make things so that they worked in one single instantiation of the plugin. And my work with the, my last generation of stereo reverbs, R4 and Nimbus, convinced me that there were things that I could also do that were part of those reverbs that I could extend into surround and they would be useful as well. These new reverbs also have some interesting dynamic control. And this is something that I experimented first with Nimbus and R4 and have extended in the new surrounds in Stratus and Symphony. And that's the fact that the reverb level can be controlled dynamically in a number of ways by the strength of the input signal. So you're not constantly awash in reverb 
that just gets louder when the input gets louder. That tends to make things cluttered and less distinct. So these reverbs have the ability to be controlled dynamically by input levels so that that reverb can get pushed down just a little or a lot. It helps an, an awful lot in terms of making things more distinct and more clear. It's also worth noting that there are still shows mixed with some very old and very popular hardware reverbs. Reverbs whose origin may go back 30 years or more. It's impractical to use those anymore. It's very difficult even to find working copies of that. But Symphony and Stratus use some technology called a warp that allows you to bring in a lot of those vintage characteristics. You can warm up a mix and get very much the same sense of things that you got out of those very popular old reverbs, but it's all in a modern workflow. I've recommended, as I said earlier, that I think the Stratus architecture may work best for Foley, Dialogue, and things like that, and that the Symphony architecture may be more appropriate for score, especially in cases where you have a lot of virtual instruments that you need to bring to life somehow. But I have mixers who've done exactly the opposite of what I've suggested, and they get a really good result. So in the end, it's you knowing how you want to mix and what you're after will guide your choice of which one is the best one for you.